Yay, it's finally bike review season. In this video, I'm going to review the Norgo Search XR Steel. It's got a custom bike look, but does it have the custom bike feel? Find out what I like and dislike about it in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into gravel bikes, bike exploration, the supple life, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. So this is the first of many bike reviews we've got coming up uh, in the queue. We're, look, we're gonna take a look at the Salsa War Road. I just built up the Otso Cycles work in. Uh, we might be getting a Crest bike, as well as a bike from Bear Claw, uh, Thesis. A lot of cool bikes coming in, so make sure you don't miss out by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. The Search Line by Norco is their gravel exploring bike, and it comes in a lot of different flavors. They've got a carbon version, uh, but I opted to review the steel one. MSRP of this bike is $2,800, so definitely a little bit more expensive than what you would get from Surly or All City, but is it worth it? We're gonna find out. The frame is steel and uses Reynolds 725 and the fork is a carbon fork. The bike comes stock with 700C wheels and tires, uh, in this case, WTB Resolutes, uh, which measured on our calipers to just 42 millimeters, although it does claim compatibility with 650B by 2.1 inches. Everything on the bike is fairly modern, so you've got through axle front and rear. Uh, this particular build had hydraulic disc brakes, SRAM rival brifters uh, connected to a one by drivetrain, 40 in the front and 10 to 42 in the rear. So a decent range, I think, if you're just gonna ride it unloaded for gravel events. In terms of utility, you can attach a rear rack and fenders to it. On the front, it doesn't have the typical three pack mount. So you could put a water bottle on there. I'm not sure if those mounts are able to carry a low rider rack. That wasn't very clear to me. I might follow up and put that in the comments below. The handlebars are by Easton and it comes with uh, some nice bar tape that matches their own uh, branded saddle. I believe it's just a, a standard bellow saddle. And lastly, probably the really nice touch is the painted to match stem. It's this cool kind of mattish olive army green. It really gives the spike a nice custom look. Overall, I think the build was pretty solid. I love the aesthetics of the bike. It just screams out adventure. Kind of reminds me of a Jeep or a Land Rover. And lastly, for the weight we need, this bike weighs in at 22 pounds. That's minus pedals and cages. So not the lightest bike, but definitely lighter in terms of production steel bikes that we're seeing. So enough of the specs. How does this bike actually ride? Does it ride as well as it looks? If there's one word that came to mind uh, when I was riding this bike, it was smooth. Overall, I found the geometry uh, well-balanced, not just be super predictable, maybe slightly more on the stable side, which I think is what you would want for a uh, bike that you're going to take on epic gravel rides or tours. It doesn't handle like a crit bike or a super aggressive road bike. It manages to be fairly relaxed without feeling sluggish. I think the, the front end tracked pretty predictably. And uh, what I liked about it was when descending on rough stuff, uh, there is actually a fair amount of compliance in the front end. It wasn't as supple as say as something like the Richie Outback, but I do think with that non-tapered head tube and the fork, which isn't super built up, I was actually surprised at how comfortable that felt hitting rocks going downhill. The rear of the bike, while not jumpy, did have a nice springiness to it. I wouldn't say that it quite plain for me, but overall there was just like this gentle, loving steel ASMR thing going on, if you know what I mean. Just this nice comforting hum that you get when you're riding a nice steel bike. I actually quite liked it. In terms of placing it within a riding spectrum, um, it's definitely not as jumpy as the Midnight Special or the Salsa War Road. I feel it's probably most comparable uh, to something like the current uh, War Bird. If you like the geometry and handling characteristics of the War Bird, but wish it were in steel, I think this would be your bike. I would say kind of similar to something like the uh, Space Horse or Cosmic Stallion. But for me personally, uh, between the two, I would actually go with the Norco. There's something about the, the, the feel of this steel that just was a little bit more unique to me. I think I would also place it as a little bit more lively uh, off the bat than the Sequoia. Uh, I don't know if that's because of uh, the wheels or what have you. And also more supple overall uh, than something like the Niner RLT. So this bike in a lot of ways is a pretty nice Goldilocks bike. Uh, it's not so slack that it's boring, uh, 
uh, and the steel makes it springy and interesting enough. So that's what I liked about the bike. What did I not like about the bike? Uh, well, you know, I mentioned I love the stem, but it's also its downfall. Uh, for some reason, I feel like they spec the stem really long on this bike. So almost immediately I had to swap out the, the nice uh, custom painted to match stem uh, just for a generic black stem, which is a total bummer because it ruined the look of the bike. I feel like the, the stock positioning they want to put you in is way forward uh, compared to the current trend in uh, gravel bikes, which is a little bit more upright so you have more control on the downhills and just have more comfort overall for longer rides. So the stem, loved it, but actually was not a fan uh, riding with it. That leads to the next point. Uh, there's lots of like strange bolts on the stem area. The faceplate of the bolt uses a uh, Torx bolts and so does the clamp on the uh, steerer tube. Not a big thing, but if you don't have the appropriate uh, wrenches for that, or if it's not your multi-tool, you will have to go out and get those to adjust it on the bike. I actually quite like the saddle on the bike. It fit me comfortably out of the box. If you, uh, if you like saddles like the Specialized Toupee, then you'll feel right at home. What I didn't like were actually the handlebars. Um, I feel like they were neither here nor there. They weren't quite flared enough. I feel like the drop was a little bit lower than I would like for a gravel bike. And also the bottom parts of the drop where they sweep back, they ended kind of short. Uh, I would have preferred just like a more uh, flared bar or something, um, you know, something like the Salsa Cow Chipper. And the last minor quibbles is I wish that the fork had the standard three pack mounts that we're seeing on other bikes so you can just put a anything cage. And also, again, you know, I mentioned this before, uh, the gearing, I think it's fine uh, for, for gravel events, but for me personally, would have loved to see a lower gearing option, uh, especially if you're gonna take a touring or loaded bike packing. No doubt, someone's gonna tell me in the comments below, what do you mean? I rode Patagonia with the same exact gearing and had no problem, well, okay, whatever. So the Norco Search Steel XR, geez, that's a long name. Uh, Beautiful looking bike, definitely a little bit on the higher end of the uh, price range when it comes to steel production bikes. But I think that the ride feel of the bike, that, that steel ASMR hum, uh, justifies the cost. Uh, so if you're looking for something to do really long uh, gravel endurance events, I think this is the perfect bike for that. Uh, you got the, the comfort compliance uh, from the frame and the geometry. It's not gonna beat you up over the long haul. Uh, you know, it does have rack and fender mounts, so you could use it as a commuter. Change the gearing and you've got a pretty capable touring bike as well. Let me know what you guys think, or if you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Subscribe for the next round of bike reviews. We've got a ton of cool bikes. And as always, keep the supple side down.